Hey guys, welcome back to the channel Zoda of Increase. My name is Nate Denise. For those of you who are new to the channel or who just happen to stumble across this video, and I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. So this video is going to be a vlog style video of me working on my sermon for the youth service that I'll be speaking at on November 24th, which is nerve wracking. Um, so I finally got in contact with the pastor of the church. Um, my uncle is what I call him. And he sent me the information regarding the scripture and the theme. I originally thought I could just, you know, come up with a topic myself, but that's not the case. So um, he sent it to me and I now have to work on my sermon <laughs> so the scripture for the service is from first samuel and it's first samuel 1 verses 27 and 28 and the theme comes from verse 27 and the verse basically says for this child i prayed and the lord has granted me my petition which i asked of him therefore i also have lent him to the lord as long as he lives he shall be lent to the lord so they worshiped the lord um, and what I know from that is that this is something that Hannah did right after Samuel was born. Um, she prayed and prayed and prayed to God for a child. God gave her a son, which was Samuel. And um, if you guys don't know who Samuel is, he was very influential in finding Saul and David and um, things like that with the kings. So this is basically the time that she basically dedicated him back to God because she told God that she would give her son back to him and then and I know for Samuel chapter 2 is when they talk about Hannah's prayer so I'm a little nervous to um work on my sermon around that just because the theme is um I prayed for this child yeah the theme is I prayed I mean for this child I prayed and the Lord heard me is what um the theme is and again, it is a youth service, so I'm going to try to formulate my sermon to the children, of course, incorporating the adults, but it is a youth service, and I want to make sure that I am speaking directly to the children, so I'm going to have to work on that, and I don't, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, I had to come up with a bio because he asked for a picture, a headshot, and a bio. Luckily, I have all of my headshots already that my fiancé took of me. Um, and the, I have one in a black dress, one in my clergy, and one in a pink shirt. You can check my Instagram or down below, I'll link to the photo that I have with all the headshots. So I'm most likely going to send one of the headshots with me in my pink shirt, just because it is a youth service and I don't want to look all stuffy with my clergy. Um, so I'm going to pick one of those with the pink shirts and send that to him. Um, I had my fiance read over my bio and he likes the bio. The bio is maybe three paragraphs long, if I'm not mistaken. I'm sorry, guys. I'm, like, editing and all this stuff at the same time and doing some clerical administrative work for church all at the same time. I'm trying to open up the bio that I wrote, but I think it's, like, one, two, three, four. It's five paragraphs, but it's really more of three paragraphs and then two sentences separated. Um, and he said he liked the way that it flowed, so I'm going to send him this as well. And I kept my bio pretty much short and simple. It's not long-winded. It doesn't talk about my education because I really don't think that has anything to do with me ministry-wise. Um, it just talks about my ministry background in the first paragraph. The second paragraph talks about um, my church background. So my first church that I went to as well as the church that I'm at now and where I was baptized and where I was ordained. The third paragraph talks about me doing ministry outside of the four walls, walls of church, which is Daughter of Increase, because that is a, min a ministry that God gave me. And then the last paragraph just talks about me being a mother of one child with my son's name, as well as my key scripture, which is John 3.30. So I have that. I need to send him that before November 10th. I'm going to have my first lady, as well as the youth pastor, just check it over and make sure it's good. Um, have my mom look it over as well and then edit my headshot so that there's no background so I can send that to him. And um, yeah, only thing I need to do is ask him how long he wants me to speak. If he tells me free reign, I'm going to try to keep my speaking to a minimum of 30 minutes only because that same day I have to go to my own service. My service starts at 4, but this service starts at 3, so I'll be speaking about 4, 4.30. So I want to try to keep it to a minimum so that I can still get to my church um, and enough time to hear whoever preaching preach. 
so um it's nerve-wracking and i did get a uh, question asked about how i make like how i go about doing my sermons and i have two completed sermons and then i have now three sermons that i've started but haven't finished because i find that it's so complicated writing a sermon and for me i try to write my complete sermon out but i'm learning that i can't do that i just need to do a manuscript and not a manuscript an outline and flow from the outline so the first step for me is obviously get the, the theme and the scripture which i already have that so the second step would be for me to do my research sorry if you guys hear my phone um, so I am going to spend some time researching. I am going to study all of 1 Samuel chapter 1. Um, I have all of my study Bibles, thank God. So I'm going to look through all of those. I'm going to look on online. I'm going to do a lot of cross-references. I know that I will be cross-referencing to Matthew 7-7, seven, seven, which is asking, um, you shall receive, knock the door, shall be open, all that. Y'all know the scripture. I'm just paraphrasing right now because I'm a little tired. Um, so I have to work on that and, uh, yeah this is gonna be a journey you guys so y'all pray for me pray for me i know y'all are praying for me and by the time y'all see this video i don't know why i say pray for me and then by the time y'all see my videos it's already after the fact but i hope y'all get what i'm saying right so yeah i'm gonna be doing that so i will come back to you guys when i decide to actually finally sit down and do that it probably won't be today um be just because i want to dive into james james wow i want to dive into john again and I'm doing a lot of other editing and things like that. So, y'all gonna come on this journey with me as I work on my sermon. And then, I don't know if I'll be able to record. I'm gonna see if my little sister can, because she'll be with us. So, I'm gonna see if she don't mind recording me speaking that Sunday. Um, so that I can obviously share it with you guys here on YouTube. And just to have for myself, because that'll be my first out of ministry speaking thing. Kind of engagement, which is like this is happening um so yeah i'm going to bring you guys along so i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys have any comments questions or concerns or any tips or ideas of how i can better work on my sermons let me know but yeah i hope you guys enjoy this vlogish video <laughs> hey guys so it is the 5th of november so it's been a couple days since i last um chatted with you guys november 5th you guys can see and um last night I got back into um, working on my sermon for the 24th, um, and it's a little complicated for me because the verse or the scripture that is a theme, like the focal scripture, is about Hannah, but the service is a youth service, and um, I'm trying to find a way to correlate the scripture to the youth and not to the adults because my thing is i grew up going to services where it would be like a youth service but the, the speakers would like speak over the youth and i don't want to do that i always said that if god ever gave me the opportunity that i would all right airplane <laughs> that i would want to you know if it's a service for the youth i want to speak directly to the youth but i'm finding that it's a little hard to do that because of the scripture um i did have a little bit more notes that I took so um here's what I got so far on this page um this I think was the original no is it this one yeah this was the original one that I was going to do um but I found out that they had a theme and all that so I still have to come up with a title I don't know what I'm gonna title title this sermon um at all it is going to be a full sermon so um 30 minutes to 45 minutes long let me stop this incessant beeping real quick okay so i stopped that annoying sound um at least in my room i closed my door all the way the other um f smoke detectors you might hear but i apologize but um this is just a vlog so when i do my vlogs i don't want to have to go through the whole shebang of the setup and all that making sure things are down but um what was i at yeah, so 1 Samuel 1, 27, 28 is the focal scripture for this, which is, I prayed for this child and the Lord heard me, and I'll um, make continuance ones after that. But it's just like, what <laughs> do I say to the youth? I'm getting a lot of nuggets out of Hannah that are great for us as adults, obviously, um, 
but I'm trying to find a way to take the points that I got and to formulate it into a way for the youth to understand and then also correlate it to my life. Um, I think I'm definitely going to focus on prayer because I feel like even as a child, a youth, youth should know how to pray. Um, and I don't mean just the Our Father prayer, you know, I mean like pray, have a actual genuine conversation with God. And as youth, at least from when I grew up, in the churches that I've gone to, visited, in the churches that I grew up at, um, minus the church that I'm at now, because the church that I'm at now is very adamant on the children really learning to pray, like, truthfully. But um, the previous church that I was at and the other churches that I would visit, I've never really saw them push for children to fully be aware of the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, they would say things here and there, obviously, repeat scripture, but I want to make sure that I'm speaking to the hearts and the spirits of the children, um, and not just the children, the youth in general. I don't know how old the youth are going to be at this church, um, but I, I just really want to speak to their heart about prayer, because I know for me, I didn't pray when I was in my teens and stuff like that, and um, I feel like if I would have prayed and opened up that door for the Lord to speak to me and for me to speak to him openly and freely, things could have gone completely different and a lot better for me. So I, I want to try to get there, because... What I get, well, I studied all of First Samuel last night, um, chapter one, and I posted on my Instagram just a snippet of my notes. I kind of blurred it out because I don't want all the notes out there until after the sermon. Um, but it's really just all about Hannah, you know, she prayed for a child, God heard her prayer, answered her prayer. She made a vow in her prayer to give her child back to the Lord, and she did exactly that. She was committed. She was reverent. She was obedient. She didn't break her vow. She was persistent in her prayer life, and through her grief and misery dealing with Penina, Penine, um, Elkanah's other wife, um, she still was fervent in her prayer. She still was going to God, relying on God, and um, she sought God even in the things that she could not control. And I feel like a lot of the times as adults, we don't like things that we can't control. And when we can't control things, we try to control them on our own. But those things that you can't control, you really need to seek God for because God can control those situations. And um, it was definitely a heart check for me. Um, there's a, a part where it talks about like the, the promise that Hannah had. Um, trying to see how I can word this because it's in the scripture and I'm, I'm probably going to do like a whole devotional time on this because I literally it sparked my heart but um Hannah's promise shows that you know she had an intense desire for her child she really wanted a son because she was barren she really just wanted a son she didn't care if it was uh, you know thousands of children she wanted that one child and um in doing that she also with her vow showed her intent to live for God so what got me is like what is the intent of my desire we can have so many desires, but are we intent on using those desires when they're fulfilled and giving them back to God? Are they for God? Are they for the edifying of the kingdom? Or are they for personal greed, personal pride, personal use um, to, you know, shame someone else? Because a lot of people desire things just because they want to look good or because they want to, you know, have the best of the best. But And you having those things, it's just like, what is it doing for God? Like, what are you doing to reverence God in having that. I recently watched a YouTube video, um, and I've been noticing a lot lately that random videos would just pop up on my YouTube, and I'll watch them, and I'm just like, okay, Lord. This young lady, she has, I think, over a million subscribers on YouTube, if I'm not mistaken, and beautiful young lady. She had this video, the title, I believe, oh my God, what was the title? I'm gonna pop it up, open up on my um, phone. I don't know if it was on which i was on one of my youtube pages i can't remember which one it was but the title of her video was like you're not alone or something like that yeah i don't think it was on this one yeah it wasn't on this one it was on my actual that's the funny thing it was on my actual daughter of increase i was logged into that channel because I have multiple um, YouTube accounts. I have Daughter of Increase, which is this one. I have my Beauty by Nay Denise, which is my makeup channel, which I haven't been on that in forever. And I need to get back to it. Starting in January 2020, I will be. Um, my book channel, which is Nay's Pink Bookshelf. And then I have a vlog channel, which is A Secret Life of Nay. And in that channel, I was doing a lot of vlogging when I was pregnant. But um, let me just go, because I, I, I really want to talk about this real quick. I'm going to go and find this video. 
yeah it's called you're not alone her name her name is chris b and um i don't even know how many subscribers she has hold on she doesn't have a million excuse me she has over 300k um subscribers and she was just talking about how sometimes she feels lost and stuff like that and a lot of the times i see a lot of people desire to be youtubers because of the fame of the money of the um popularity but what does that do for you and as i was listening to her video and hearing her talk i was literally praying like lord help her because she's completely lost and caught up in the fame and the money and the popularity um, and she forgets that she's human and that she will go through these emotions and you can't fill that void with um, things you need to have God in your life. And I'm not sure if she's a Christian or not. I don't know if she believes in Jesus or God, but I was literally praying. I'm actually going to go back to her video and make a comment. But um, that was just like, what is the intent of your desire? Is it for you or are you doing it to glorify God? Are you doing it to worship him? Are you doing it to edify the, the kingdom? Are you doing it to edify someone's spirit like i think that a lot of people don't think about that and i know as children and as youth we don't think about it we just want to live our lives but it's just like what the things that you're doing what are they doing for the kingdom like if i would have thought like that back in my times in college and high school i probably would not have hung out with half the people that i did i probably would not have gone to the places that I've gone and probably would not have done the things that I would have done because they were not edifying <laughs> to the body of God. They were not edify edifying to um, my spirit. Like, they just, they were fun. I, I wanted to do it. I desired to be cool. I desired to be down with people. I desired to want to hang out and be popular. But um, it ain't do nothing for me. Especially when you're in that, like, sad, depressed mode. And I know as kids... Um, sometimes kids don't feel like they can talk to their parents. My mom is very open. Thankfully, I've had a mom that was very open and willing to talk with me and my siblings all the time. She still does to this day. And sometimes it'd be like, all right, chill, mom. We can't talk about that. Mm, you know, um, cause that's my mom. But, you know, even when you have parents that are willing to be open with you, you still have that kind of void. Cause you're just like, well, that's my parent. Like, I can't really say this or that to that person. And I feel like if we teach children to pray, and I mean, like, not just the repeating your words over and over, repeating the same, our father, you know, daily bread prayer. No, but to really sit and converse with the Holy, with the Holy Spirit. Why did I just say that? <laughs> to converse with God as a person, as if he were sitting there with you. Um, I think a lot of children would be a little bit better. So I'm, I'm still trying to formulate i'm gonna do this because a lot of the notes that i have are great i just need to be able to break it down for the children to understand and obviously i'm gonna have some nuggets here and there for the parents um and just adults in general because i don't want to just solely focus on the children i'm gonna have a little bit in there for the adults to understand but um i really want to make this about the youth um i really want to be able to help them understand the love of god help them to understand the love of Christ, help them to understand that Jesus is with them, no matter what they're going through in school, no matter how, you know, um, the, the, how people are treating them or whatever the case may be. Um, but that's my desire with this. And I'm taking my time because I don't want to rush this and um, I want it to be right. And this is my full, like, first time full sermon that I'm giving. And then it's not even at my ministry, it's at another ministry. <laughs> so, um, Granted, I know the leaders at their ministry, my uncle and my aunt. I call them that. They're my spiritual uncle and aunt because they have been with me since I was <laughs> yay high or whatever. But um, that that's what I desire. I desire this, this, this sermon to really be about the youth learning to truly come to a sense of prayer. And um, yeah, it's interesting. So I have my notes. I'm still going to get some more research done um, just so that I can get some things. I have some cross-references written down as well i have two two four six eight nine cross references written down um i'm gonna try to do 10 and then try to formulate that into my um sermon and things like that so hopefully by next week i can actually begin writing it out typing it out i prefer to type my sermons out so i'm gonna try to get that going but um yeah so the bibles that i have out I have this one out. This is the Wordsby Study Bible from Thomas Nelson, the King, New King James. Um, if you guys can see that right there, that's the Study Bible. Um, I took it out. It ain't really helping me, honestly, <laughs> because there's no notes or any commentary. 
um, in here. I'm trying to do the research aspect, and it's kind of hard, um, but it does have cross-references, so I was looking through the cross-references on this, but I have this Bible out because I'm going to use this for the cross-references that I have to look up. I have the original HCSB study Bible for women um, from Holman. They do have the new CSB one with the pretty florals. Um, that's the updated version. This is the old one. This one is the lavender and blush. This ain't really lavender. It's purple, but they call it lavender. Don't know why, but I have this one out. It has some interesting points, so I did take some points out of here to write down. I don't know why I took this Bible out because it's an archaeology <laughs> archaeological Bible. But um, this is an archaeology study Bible from Crossways, the ESV one. I love this Bible so much. I love the illustrations in this Bible. I don't really know why I took it out because it don't really got nothing to do with what I'm doing. But I took it out and we're going to roll with it. Um, <laughs> then I have the uh, King James Pray the Scriptures Bible. I just took this out because there is an aspect um, called Authentic Prayer. And they had one for the section of 1 Samuel 1 verses 1 through 20 um and i did underline some stuff as you can see that um i think it's essential that i want to use and that's actually where i got the whole thing about hannah's promise it says that hannah's promise shows her intense desire for a son and her intent to live for the lord and um there was also a portion that says that there are no bargains to be struck with god and that's something i really want to discuss with the youth because a lot of the times i know as a child i was like well maybe if i do this then god will do this for me or you know i can talk to god about you know i'll do this but i don't want to do that and we can compromise there ain't no compromising with the holy spirit <laughs> there's no compromising with god um mm -mm. no not at all and i really just want to reiterate that to the children so we have that um so i'm using this bible it's literally just a bible with prayers um, and I'm going to do my flip through of this Bible because I don't know if you guys can see all these washi tapes are portions that I have like written prayers at. So here's a prayer here on the sticky note. Another prayer. I mean, I love this Bible. Here's another prayer. I don't use it as often as I desire to use. Um, over here, I wrote a prayer here on the sticky note and on the side of the page. Oh, this one has two prayers on sticky notes. So I use this to literally like write prayers and pray scripture. That's what it's about. So we have that. Um, and then I have my two obvious ones, which is the Thomas Nelson. I mean, that video coming. I'm not going to say by the end of December. I'm going to say by the end of January, part two will come because, yep. Mm -hmm. But I'm using that. And then my new favorite Bible. Everybody's always asking me the Bible that I'm using when I post on Instagram. And it's my new favorite Bible. It is the New King James Spirit-Filled Life Bible from Thomas Nelson. I have the third edition. Um, this literally has become my new love. I take it everywhere. Um, if I'm going to another church or if I have to, like, do a scripture at church, I take this Bible. One, because the font is extremely big and I can see it. Um, two, I just, I love this Bible so much. This is my, like, everyday desk Bible. Like, this Bible is out anywhere I go. It's, it's amazing and um i would almost say this is kind of like my preaching bible but it's not my preaching bible i need to actually invest in a preaching bible um that has a large font that i can read um and i don't know if i want to just get an actual like preacher's minister's bible or if i just want to get a journaling bible i don't know i'm so debating on what i want to do i might get a preaching bible just because of how it's set up um verse by verse um, instead of like flowing in paragraph form or things like that so I don't know I'm still up in the air about what I want to do as far as my bible for when I have to speak out because I've noticed there is a huge difference <laughs> when I read scripture from here in front of the congregation versus using my journal and bible or anything like that because oh yo when you're up there it's like everything tries to stop you from seeing the words in your bible because the bible font is pretty small this one is pretty large i use it this past sunday i helped out my um my senior pastor and my youth pastor at an ordination service and i had to read the new testament scripture and i was able to flow easily with this bible so um yeah so i have my highlighters out here my zebra highlighters um they're the zebra mount liners or zebra mount liners. A lot of people say mid liners. I don't know why they call them mid liners because there's definitely an L. Uh, it says mild. Can you see that? M I L D. Um, I've seen a lot of like bullet journalers review these, 
and they call them midliners and i'd be like sweetie no there's an l like there's an l there it's an l in there mild mild liners like mild liners um they are my favorite liners um ever my favorite highlighters i have the entire set all five packs i even have the brush tips let me grab those actually so i have the rest of my mild liners in here i have three other ones inside of this pouch and then I have the brush tip set, which I don't really get to play with as often, but um, they're basically a brush tip with the smaller, thinner fine point. Um, so you're basically getting the same color, but with four different tips because the point on here is not as thin, but the point on the brush tip is thin. Um, and again, it's literally like same blue color. But you're getting four tips, which is great. Um, I haven't really, like I said, played with these as much. I do want to get into learning calligraphy. But, um, y'all got me a bagel right now. Mm. And it's so delicious. But right. I'm going to get back into working on this. Um... It's 10.54. I'm probably going to give myself an hour just to let anything else come out of my head onto the paper before I go to my computer. Um, yeah, because I want to at least start working on this by the weekend, typing it out. Maybe Monday I'll start typing my, my sermon out. But, um, I'm having a hard time coming up with a topic. But I might not. I don't know. I also need to send in my bio because I finally worked on my bio. I need to edit one of my headshots and send it over to my uncle to put on the program at his at his church. And when I get that program, I'm actually gonna keep that program and um you know, it's gonna be my first time speaking out. So that's definitely gonna be like a mem mem Oh, excuse me. I was about to choke on the, the um, bagel. But that's definitely going to be something that I have to keep um, just for memory's sakes because that's like my first out of sermon service. And I definitely desire to do more of these. Um, I definitely want to go to different ministries and preach the word of God. I really do. I'm also working on a service that I want to hold at my church, um, a woman's service. Um so yeah I'm, I'm working on a lot of stuff but i just wanted to update you guys on what's going on with my sermon because this is a sermon vlog so yeah i'm gonna um come back to you guys maybe tomorrow or the day maybe another day and let you guys know how it's been going so far where i've gotten with my notes and if i started typing up um but i don't I don't work on my sermon consecutively. I know some people do that. They work on it every day. I need days in between so that I can let my mind and my brain get together so that I can let the Holy Spirit reveal some things if need be. I'll study the scriptures over and over and read the scripture over and over, but I won't always write things down unless I'm getting something from the Holy Spirit. But just that, I'm going to get back to this album from them and, of course, YouTube shutdown. Um, and, yep. So, I'll see you guys in the next clip.
Okay, guys. So you saw me um, flipping through my Bible and writing stuff down on post-it notes. And these are just the regular brand post-it notes. Um, I got them from Walmart. Regular brand post-its. I have like a bin of post-its. I'll show you guys one day. But what I did was I went through all of the cross-references that I wanted to use. And I really wanted to just sit down and figure out which ones I would use. So I wrote 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 down. I'm only going to use 7 of them. Um, the other two I'm just not going to use. I don't think they're going to work for a youth service. But I just wrote down all of my thoughts for each scripture. Just quick thoughts that came up the top of my head um, from each scripture onto the post-it. No, I didn't write in this book just because this book is perforated. And um, I think I'm just going to change over to another notebook. So I do have this one out. Um, this, I don't even know where I got it from honestly but it's a notebook and it says love on it and it's gold foil with floral prints i'm going to use this as my sermon writing notebook only because i don't even read off of a notebook like i type my sermons up anyway so i'm going to transfer all of my thoughts for my sermons into this so i'm going to start off with the sermon that i have for today or that's the sermon that's coming up and put all of my notes transferred into here um so i already have two sermons completed um, working on my third one and then I have three other ones that are inside of here that are not yet done so I'm actually going to take all of those out right now so that I can transfer all of these notes because this is um, perforated and the sheets are already coming out and I don't like that so That's what I'm going to do. But um, I was sitting here just flipping back and forth because I was getting revelations from other scriptures and stuff like that. Um, like the last cross reference that I wrote down. Give me one second. Um, but the last cross reference that I wrote down was for um, Philippians 4, 6 through 7, which talks about um, how we aren't supposed to be anxious for anything and, you know, pray with Thanksgiving and all that stuff. Um, and in the midst of me writing that, I was like, be thankful. And then I thought about the three Hebrew boys, um, and how they, I don't know why it correlated back to the three Hebrew boys. Really? I was just writing it. It just literally popped out in my head. Um, I put, where is it at? Be thankful. Like the Hebrew boys, Daniel three, 16, 18. And, um, it was when they were saying how, like, they have no need to answer him and that if. Um, in case God doesn't sa save them, uh, you know, it is okay. Yeah, I know the scripture right now. My son is in the room, so I'm trying to make this quickly. But um, I don't know. That just came in my head. I don't know if I'm going to correlate that with Philippians 4 and 6 or if I'm going to correlate that back to 1 John 5, 14 and 15, which talks about the confidence that we have in the assurance of Jesus um, and in, in, in the assurance of of God so I'm definitely going to use that scripture I just don't know where I'm going to correlate that at but that came to my mind so that is what is on the agenda for today I don't have anything on this page right now okay so I'm going to put this notebook up because I'm not going to use it anymore um it's just it's not working I'm making sure I don't have any post-its or anything stuck in here my son is being weird guys but um I don't have anything else in here that I need, so I can put this to the side and put that up. But that's what's going to happen. So um, I'm going to work on that. I'm listening to Kari Jo Bay's album right now. It's the Garden album. I bought this stuff on ChristianBook.com almost two years ago, probably a year ago. And um, I used to listen to it all the time when I worked. Because I find that when I listen to regular gospel music, like if I listen to Jonathan McReynolds, I'm all out bawling in tears. Um, Ty Trivet, I start singing songs, especially the ones that I know. So I got her album because she has a beautiful voice, but it's not like my type of gospel music. But I love the lyrics. So listening to her music, it doesn't put me in that upbeat, sing the song, dance kind of mood. It helps me to literally focus on the words that she's saying, focus on the word of God. And um, I really like her album, though. I think I want to dance to a couple of her songs. They're very different from what I'm used to. Um, she almost kind of sort of has like that Hillsong type of vibe. But um, I can't explain it. But I just I love her album. It's so pretty. The inside, the back of it. Um, the little booklet that came with it is so cute. But that's what I'm doing. And you guys saw me marking up. Hold on, Bubby. Hold on. Nice. Okay. 
But you guys saw me um, marking in my Bible, using my Bible, annotating color code. I'm going to make a video on this because I know a lot of you are interested in that. Um, I don't always color code in my Bible. But when I do, I use this. So that's that. But I'm going to get back to working on this and keep you guys posted. Hey guys, um, it's November 19th right now. It's currently 2.14 p.m. I think this is day three and I'm stressed. <laughs> Try not to cry right now. Like, I'm emotionally, I'm just starting to doubt. Um, I have three pages of notes, and I can't figure out what to say, how to say it. And it's frustrating me a lot. Um... I don't know. Is this... It's really frustrating to the point where I'm gonna, I'm really about to just like rip my notes out and just say forget it. Um, I don't know. I've, I've been writing stuff, but it's not flowing the way I need it to, and it's. I don't know. I'm really trying like so hard not to cry right now because I just. I don't, know. I don't know. But I just wanted to come on camera so you guys can see what I really go through when I'm working on a sermon. This is what happened with the last couple of sermons that I have back here on, on this paper. Like I have sermons back here that I started but I couldn't finish them because I didn't know how to get them out on paper so I'm, I'm stressing right now because it's Tuesday and I give the sermon on Sunday but I need to be finished by Friday because Friday night and Saturday night I have church because we have our revival so I don't I don't know I'm really frustrated right now. And everything is irritating me. I don't know if you guys can hear the banging. My landlord is downstairs banging. My brother's being super loud. I'm just like... I'm over it. And I'm sick on top of that, so... You guys probably wouldn't be able to tell from the reading vlog I did. Because it's the same day as I ended the, the reading vlog. But I am sick. I did start get, getting sick on um, Saturday because I had to dance Sunday and the song that I was dancing to on Sunday was one that was really tough um, spiritually for me to do. Um, so my body started aching, my throat started hurting. I still feel like a hot mess right now. So it's just like everything is piling on top of each other and it's frustrating me so much right now. I don't know what to do. And I don't want to have to, like, do everything over from scratch because this is Sunday. Like, it's not that far away from, from today. So, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So, um, if I figure something out, I'll come back to you guys. I think I'm going to just close up my notebook because I really feel like if I don't I'm going to break down and I don't want to have a breakdown I have to pick up my son in another 25 minutes or so so yeah I don't know um mm, yeah I'm gonna put this up now and Hopefully I'll come back to you guys tomorrow with some semblance of what I'm going to be doing. So, yeah. Hey guys, so this is actually day five of the sermon writing vlog and I didn't realize it until I looked in, at the other footage and stuff. So, um, it's Thursday, November 21st. Oh, get that back up there. Okay. Thursday, November 21st, 8.53 a.m. I had took my son to school. 
um, today is my son's father's birthday, which is, like, insane, like, <laughs> we're getting old, but, um, yeah, today is his birthday, so I did message him, um, but the plan for today, because it's literally Thursday, I have Friday, Saturday, and then I speak Sunday, so I have about two and a half days before I have to speak, and, um, I have nothing, N nothing typed, nothing. No, nothing guys nothing um you saw on the 19th i forgot what day that was the previous clip i just was not feeling it mentally i just was like i'm exhausted i can't do it um when i feel like that i just have to sit back take a break even when i was speaking to my mom she told me to just take a break um i think when i was preparing to write the sermon and when i sat down and wrote out all of my notes um i was over not overthinking i don't want to say overthinking but i was just doing a little too much and um i prayed but it wasn't like god how can i say it, it wasn't like i was asking the lord to reveal it to me i was trying to force it myself um and i think that's probably where i went wrong my notes are great um the notes I, they blow my mind obviously it wasn't me it was the holy spirit giving me the notes but i think in trying to figure out how to speak to the children i'm overthinking it a little bit so it took me some days away from even looking at my notes even doing anything but before I do that oh my god I'm sorry guys my eye is killing me so um I just took some time and read some books I, I literally took time off and read so let me tell you guys what I've been reading okay because I've been reading some bomb bomb books so um I read the end of the magi by Patrick W Carr had to it was really good i gave this four star rating and then i read the piper's pursuit by melanie dickerson now before i begin this is biblical fiction um it took it started around the time of the prophet daniel but then it happens 500 years after daniel um and it's just about the magi and it basically gives a story to the three magi that had went to see baby jesus when he was born and brought him the gifts that's what this was about really really enjoyed this um then i read the piper's pursuit by melanie dickerson this is book 10 in the hagenheim series that she has it's basically a reimagining of the pied piper with faith elements and i so love this especially because there was ref there were references to the warrior maiden which was book nine which was a reimagining of mulan enjoyed it um after that i read a comic book well graphic novel rather i then read this gra i actually read both of these <laughs> last night in one day so today's the 21st i read i started these on the 20th and completed them on the 20th you guys that's how good they were so first is this deadly deceit by um natalie walters this is book two in the harvard secrets i think it is yeah i did not read book one which is called living lies um this is romantic suspense this is christian it's from rebel um, but I gave it, I ended up giving this four stars. I flew through this, you guys. This was actually really, really good. A lot better than I thought it was going to be. Um, there is a book three coming out and book one is called Living Lies. Book three, I forgot what it's called. They have a snippet. It's called Silent Shadows. Um, so I definitely need to get my hands on book one. Um, and I think I'm going to read book three as well. But this was absolutely really good. Really, really good. Better than I thought. And then I read this comic graphic novel excuse me called estranged by um ethan m eldridge this is not christian related in any sense this is strictly fantasy about fairies and changelings and things like that this was really really good i enjoyed the illustrations in this story it was really really fun um it's more of like a, a young adult middle grade-ish kind of read i loved it so much so i read this the deadly deceit is a um christian romantic suspense really really enjoyed it in the romance in this but um i took some time to read basically reading always clears my mind I'm just putting my books back on the cart. But, I got a package from my sis, Stephanie. And, first of all, this package was supposed to come yesterday. Um, they had it out. I'm sorry, my eye is just itching. Right near my waterline, and I hate when that happens. Okay. But, um, yeah, so the package was supposed to come yesterday. The post office decided to be stupid and not deliver my mail tried to say that they didn't have access to um, delivery. That was a lie. Yeah, I just didn't want to get out the car to come to my house. Because normally they deliver my packages. If it's coming on the truck, they deliver my packages early in the morning. So I didn't understand that, but whatever. It came this morning, literally like 7, 8, 8 o'clock it came when I was on my way out the door. So here's the package. 
I know what this package is. Um, it's makeup, and I'm like so so excited. I don't know what is in here, so I'm even more excited. If you guys don't know, I am a freelance makeup artist. I do makeup on the side every now and then. Um, I work at a salon. I do photo shoots. I do runway. I do bridal, birthday parties, makeovers, everything of that nature. Um, I want to do more of it, but I think I need to get my license first because a lot of the gigs that I do. Jersey, you just need a, a car. When I was in New York, I could just take public transportation. Um, even then, that was a hassle, but it came today. I'm so excited. So, and as you got, like I said, it just came today, so it's still wrapped up and everything. So, I am going to do it on camera, and I was just going to open it, but I need something as a pick me up before I get back into writing my sermon and stuff because I'm losing my mind, you guys. I'm losing it. But um, I do want to say thank you guys for all your support. Um, lately on Instagram, like a lot of you have been commenting on um, my headshots that I took for evangelism. And um, I really appreciate it so much. And just the love in general is amazing. And people do keep asking me about the giveaway winner. I already um, picked the giveaway winner. I already spoke to, give to the giveaway winner. Because what happened was... <laughs> Every time I went to record a clip of me picking the winner, this person just kept popping up and popping up. And literally, like, I kid you not, this person popped up four times when I picked the winner. I'm not lying. So I contacted this person and let them know. So the package was already sent. She should receive it Friday, tomorrow. Um, and it's my sister Stephanie. So, Steph, if you guys don't know, click the I to go to her channel, Colton Beauty and Books. I think that's how you say the channel. But, um, yeah, she won. Literally, it was like a guy thing. I kept picking a new winner, and her name just kept popping up first. I don't even know if I still have the footage. Because I was going to make a whole big video, but then I just said I'm, I'm, I'm behind on videos. I have so many videos waiting to be edited, you guys, on my computer. It's It's ridiculous. But it's okay. I deleted the footage. Oh, here's one of the footages where I, that I took. I'm going to play it so you guys can hear it. Okay, so as you guys see, this is like the third time I'm making this video. And yet again, Stephanie was chosen for this. But, but yeah. Um, Alright, so. Boom. And she taped it on the inside. I love it. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. 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 First thing I see is pink, and, um, okay, 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 okay. So, open. I see the first thing, which is pink. Oh, I'm so excited. You guys don't understand. I'm a makeup nerd. I love makeup, but. Mm, this is so cute. It's a brush cleaner, you guys. I, I know exactly what this is, because I have to use them. But mine's, um, are more egg-shaped and smaller, so this one is a lot bigger. And I... I love brush cleaners, like, they were amazing to clean my brushes, so I'm here for the brush cleaner. I'm here for it. Okay, okay. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, okay. Oh my god. No. You're lying. Oh. Okay, so this is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector pressed um and it's basically a, a highlighter it's a becca highlighter it's um you guys oh my god i'm here for it i'm i am i'm here i'm here for it, you guys i'm here and then i see oh, okay black radiance i love me some black radiance um this color is in brick house yes i do i have been doing um photo shoots with my son's father um, and the models he's been getting are like more on the darker skin tone complexion. So this would definitely work on them, even on my lighter skin complexion models, my, you know, any type of model this works. But, um, I just, I like deep colored blushes for some reason. Don't know why, but yes. Ah, here's another one. Oh, oh gosh, this is just, this is gorgeous. Oh, so this is more of like a chocolatey bronze, and then this one is lighter. Yes! Listen, we are here for it, okay? You guys, literally, this whole box is just like, okay, what's this? This is Milk Makeup, a matte loose setting powder, translucent deep, great. I can always use this with my clients. Um, what's another Becca product? What's this? Light Chaser Highlighter for Eyes and Face. 
Oh gosh, yes. Oh gosh, I don't understand. I I have to. I just. Ha oh yes, my lord, my lord. You guys are not going to be able to see it that well, but it's so pretty. Oh my god. I'm a I'm a makeup lover. Okay, I'm gonna swatch all of these because I don't. Why not? Right? Why not? Oh, that is that is gorgeous. Oh. It just dropped, but luckily it didn't break. OMG. So that's that eye one that I just swatched. That's the darker one I just swatched. Okay. Um, oh, it kind of popped out, but that's okay. It's powder. Let me get a tissue. Y'all don't understand the makeup lover in me. It's just like, God, yes. Hallelujah. Here is the more golden one. It just feels so buttery. Yes. Oh, there they are together. I don't know if you'll be able to see it on camera, but I see it in person, and it's gorgeous. Um, the Black Radiance Blush. Yes. Oh, that is nice. That's a nice color for the cheeks. That that's gonna pop. Yes. Um, I'm gonna have to wash my hands after this. What is this? Oh, eyelashes. I, I'm here for it. Now, I personally don't like eyelashes. I personally just like to put on mad good, you know, mascara. But I do use eyelashes on my clientele. So, um, eyelashes are great. But I actually might keep these. These don't look dramatic. If I do wear eyelashes, they have to be on the natural side. I don't like the overly dramatic look. I just, I don't like it. But those are nice. Okay, so what's this? And, like, she taped everything up. Oh, Laura Mercier translucent powder. Yes. We need some of that. I think I had, like, a small sample of bare... Yep. I, I had a small sample of Bare Minerals, and she sent me some. So, this one is an eyeshadow called Lemon Zinger from Bare Minerals. And then this one is more of a glimmering eyeshadow, and it's called True Gold. But uh, colors like this, you could definitely use as, like, highlighters. If you guys don't know, makeup may, like, it may be called an eyeshadow, but you can use it for something else. Okay, then we have, pa oh my god, palettes. I love palettes. I love palettes. Oh my god, oh my god. Okay, so I saw her show, I think, two of these in her videos, and I was here for it. Oh my god. You guys, I'm just, like, I'm overly ecstatic about this stuff. Yes, okay. Ah! I'm sorry, guys. Okay. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. I can't deal, you guys. I Sis, oh my. I'm gonna try not to cry on camera. Is that everything okay? <sighs> okay, I'm, I don't even know where to start. I'm gonna start, I guess, with this, okay? Um, no, I'm not gonna start with that. I'm gonna start with this. This is a Z palette. I know exactly what Z palettes are. Um, we love Z palettes, duh. <laughs> but um, I got a cheetah print Z palette. And, um, you know, a Z palette is basically a magnetic palette where you can just put in eyeshadows. It doesn't really matter, um, if you guys don't know what that is. But, with that, she sent me three make eyeshadows. Like, what? So, the first one she sent me was, oh, I actually love this color. She sent me Beauty Marked, um, oh my god, guys. It's called Beauty Marked. It's just a gorgeous... I don't even know how to describe Beauty Mark. It's almost a black, but it's almost a brown with, like, purple iridescence. Um, Beauty Mark is just a really pretty color. It's a deep color. But, um, I don't put it back in the package as much. Send me that. What color is this? This is Sketch. Oh, we do know what Sketch is as well. Sketch is almost the same kind of, um, purpley color. Um, it's not even purple. It's more of, like, a... It's hard to explain. There it is. <laughs> I know what sketch is though. We love sketch. And I'll show you guys exactly how this works. So taking this color, um, on the back it says what the color is. Sketch. And you literally just pop it into the palette. And it stays there. It's magnetic. So yes. Um, I'm gonna keep it in its original packaging for now though. Because I'm just that type of person. <laughs> um, okay, 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 okay. 
Sis. Okay, so we've sketched, we have beauty marked, and this last one is a gorgeous color, and it's called Lime. And um, I'm here. I love fun colors. And this is going to be handy, handy when I start my um, series with the book to makeup looks. Yes, please. But like I said, it's called Lime, so that's upside down. Sis. Okay, so we have that, right? Then we have this. I don't know. I've never heard of this. Have I? It's a good question. I think I have. But um, it's called Revolution Makeup Revolution London with Emily with Emily Edit the Wants. Um, it sounds familiar, but I have been so far from. Oh my god! You guys, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! This. Okay, so if you guys don't know, I have a beauty channel. Call. It started out as Makeup by Nate Denise, and I changed the channel to Beauty by Nate Denise because I have a separate Makeup by Nate Denise channel. Um, and I've been wanting to get back into doing makeup for a minute. I don't. I think my last video was maybe a year or two years ago on that channel, and that channel has about a thousand, almost two thousand subscribers. But I just, I, I didn't, I didn't feel a passion for it because the beauty community can be a little all over the place, lots of drama every now and then, and I don't have time for that, you know. But these colors, my God. These colors, you guys, are gorgeous. I'm going to show you. Sis. Okay. Do you see? First of all, I'm here for that. I'm here for this. I'm here for this. Um, What is the color? This color here? Gorgeous. My my son's father is calling me. Um, It's his birthday. I'm going to call him back, though. <laughs> but, oh, my gosh. I'm I'm here for it. And it's corduroy. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Make Makeup videos are coming. Then, oh, I'm not even done, you guys. Then, I have been wanting this palette in the original palette for so long but yeah i know financially i'm just not there yet to be you know spending that kind of money i do believe that i will be soon but um i also have to be mindful about my kit and as a makeup artist um i try to make sure that anything that i get for my makeup kit can be used in more than one way so i was not expecting this um honestly i'm gonna be honest i was only expecting the four palettes that are in front of me um she, she says yes the lorac pro palette too yes like now i might just buy one but it's basically neutrals and i'm here for it i'm i'm here for that blue this blue, oh gosh, that blue. I have to swatch that blue. I, I cannot just not swatch that blue. Oh my god. Then there's color called Forest. Oh, they got a color called Lavender. <laughs> oh my god. Oh, the makeup lover in me is excited. I'm, I feel blessed. Y'all don't understand. I feel blessed and highly favored right now. My fingers are a mess. That lavender, oh, you know I got to do a look with that lavender, right? All right, and then I got the Urban Decay Nocturnal Shadow Box. I like Urban Decay. I have the Urban Decay Naked Palette, the Urban Decay, uh, the other the other little Naked Palette from Urban Decay, but it's like the smaller ones. I don't know what it's called. I can't remember. But these colors, oh my gosh. They're all shimmery, but again, these, <gasps> this looks like that color from MAC. Oh my God, why can't I think of it right now? Blue green? No, it's not called blue green, is it? I don't know, but there's a matte color that looks just like this. It's like a oh my, I don't know how to describe it, but let's watch that blue. Oh <laughs> my god, this color here. Oh yes, I think it's called blue green from Mac. I can't really remember. Ooh, fireball. Yes, backfire. Ooh, that's that's. Mm. Y'all can't tell me that. Okay, I'm just saying. I know this is a little long, but I just wanted to throw this in here before I start getting to work. Um, okay. And then, Tarte. Tarte is a brand that I really always wanted to put in my kit, that I wasn't 100% sure. And then I saw my sister's video, and she was talking about it. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should. But then, you know, sis was like, she she don't want to, she, she might throw them out or give them away. And, you know, I got them. First of all, one thing I love about Tarte, their packaging is forever cute. Like, everything Tarte does is cute and I've always been like that for years um, with Tarte. Their palettes are cute. So we have this palette here. I'm trying to figure out. Okay, so that's that. And this is that. Okay, so this one is called the Goddess Glam. Um, it's an eye and cheek kit. First of all, <laughs> you, 
yes for the packaging like I'm, I'm a sucker for packaging but um these colors i'm here for i am here for these colors i know she was talking about this blush let's see mm, okay yeah i see what she means with this blush this blush would be really nice on my other clients um but it doesn't really work for us brown skin and that highlight is actually pretty you guys can't see the highlight. Well, there's a highlight. That's the blush. The blush probably won't be the best on me, but um, definitely on my clients. But these eyeshadows, yes, I, I could see a whole look here. Just mm, okay. We're, we're gonna move on. Video too long. Um, obviously I'm gonna sanitize all of these um these items. Um, and with makeup, when it comes to eyeshadows, I do use per eyeshadows. Um. On myself and in my kit especially when it comes to high-end makeup I don't normally put high-end makeup on myself personally I don't mind using drugstore that's just me but in my professional kit I do prefer to use high-end just because you know clientele can be very very picky but um, then she sent me the tartlet which ugh. do y'all see the lavender to the purple I'm just saying and um, this is basically just neutrals which we're here for I'm trying to cover up the mirror, but neutrals on deck. Let me turn on this other light to try to get you guys to see. Is that better? It's a little better. But, um, I like this deep purple. Really pretty. It's called Bombshell. These are neutral colors. Definitely nice. Um, I can definitely pull off a look with these. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay. And with it, it comes with this little thing. Basically, that gives you kind of, like, ideas to do. So, it gives you a daytime look and then a playtime look that you can do. And it tells you exactly which colors to use. So, you get it in English and Spanish. So, that's cool. And then, the same thing with this next palette. It's called In Bloom. And again, gorgeous, gorgeous packaging. Tarte always does it bomb. And this is another neutral um, palette. And it gives you the sunflowers there and the magic moonflower. With the colors that you can use. So I'm definitely going to try to recreate these looks with these. But um, sis, sis, just thank you so much. Like, I'm the makeup nerd in me is excited. The makeup artist in me is excited. And then I'm also excited because I can use these for like the videos I want to do on my channel. Like definitely when I do the Jerusalem's Queen um, book look, book to makeup look. That's what I meant to say. Um... I'm using one of these palettes. I don't know which palette. It might be this palette or it might be this palette. But one of these palettes will be used, okay? Um I'm a I'm a fan for Tarte. Their their products are gorgeous. But yeah, I'm obviously gonna sanitize everything up. Um not not today though. I got stuff to do. Um but before I actually use them, I will sanitize everything. Um but I am like this 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 pro palette, I'm here for it. I don't, I don't even know where to begin, you guys. Like, I am so, like, sis. I'm trying not to get makeup all over myself because I definitely got makeup everywhere on my, on my, myself. So, I'm going to go wash all this off and then come back to the camera. Okay, guys, so I'm back. Um, I washed my hands. I talked to my son's father on the phone for a few because I called him back. And um, now I'm going to spend some time. I'm going to restudy it again um, for a Samuel one. I'm going to literally just restudy the whole thing. Um, I mean, I really don't have to. I mean, because I technically have two pages of notes and then I have cross references. But even with the cross references, it's like when I go to type, I end up picking different cross references. So, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out. If I can pull out three main points from Hannah, what I've learned from Hannah, and correlate that to the youth. So, that's what I'm going to do. Um, I'm just going to write any new notes on the back of the third page. So, the third page ends here. I'm just going to start fresh. Fresh new sheet of paper on the back. Um, I have my Bible open already to 1 Samuel 1. And um, I'm going to quickly just pray. Um, obviously not on camera. I'm going to spend some time praying and asking the Lord to really just come into me studying this so that I can have something that he would have me to speak. Um, I don't want this to be about me finding something to speak to the youth. I want it to come directly from him. 
um so that's what i'm gonna do i am a little hungry but i got me a bottle of water here for today it's 9 49 so i'm gonna give myself an hour um an hour to just sit through study and really allow the lord to um speak to me as i read but i am gonna spend some time in prayer first so i'll spend a time about an hour um yeah i'll come back hopefully at like 11 o'clock ish maybe it's 9 15 gonna we'll spend a few minutes in prayer come back at 11 o'clock and let you guys know what i have and then we'll see what happens from there because yeah um so let's just dive in okay guys i'm back and um it hasn't really been that long but this is all i have because everything else is going back to the notes that I had originally wrote. So, I don't know. I know one thing I do want to, or I feel the Lord pressing on me to point out, is that um, Hannah, even in her grief, her humiliation... Um, she didn't allow her emotions to overtake her and stop her from going to the one that could solve her problems. She went to God. When she was bitter, she went to God. When she felt humiliated, um, when she was constantly provoked, she went to God. Um, and she poured out from her place of grief. And, um, I don't know. I don't know this this is frustrating me again oh god i don't know you guys so i'm just i don't i don't think i'm gonna finish this vlog for today i don't even know why i started recording because i'm getting frustrated all over again but a lot of you always want to know like some of you have asked me recently how my process goes this is the process um sometimes it's easier than others like, for the sermon I did, not the sermon, for when I had to speak for my brother's birthday celebration, I could not get my sermon together up until, I think, that Friday. Um, I think that Friday night, I was, like, overwhelmed, and my mom had to come and sit and talk with me and really just get me to take a minute. Um, and I took that minute, and then I was able to get it together. I just... It's frustrating when you have so many thoughts in your head, so much stuff written down, and it doesn't get put together. And um, I don't want to go and just talk off the top of my head. Like, I need something like, unless I take my notebook, but even then, I don't, I don't know. I don't know so i'm just gonna end this vlog here and if i decide to finish then i'll come back on later but i'm just i don't care at this point um and this is me being 100 percent honest right now this this is how it is for me to sit and write a sermon it's not easy it's very trying um and it's irritating so i'm just gonna sit up and stare at my computer watch some videos and prayerfully something will come to me because i don't have anything right now um and I'm freaking out internally. Like, I'm trying not to cry on camera. I'm freaking out internally. I thought today was going to be another, like... I thought today was going to be a good day. Like, where I could sit, get my thoughts together. No. So. I'll come back on later if I happen to type anything out or complete my sermon. My goal was to try to get it done by today because tomorrow and Saturday we have church. And I'm going to be super busy both days. Um, I'll... I'm going to be singing on praise and worship and dancing, so I have to focus on that, but I don't, I don't know. I may just end this vlog here, and then, you know, you'll see the next video, which will most likely be my sermon. Um, but I may give it one more day. I may come back to you guys Saturday before we go to church and give you guys my thoughts today is thursday i just i i i can't i can't do but this is a real raw true way that my sermon writing goes um it's a hassle 
hopefully I'll be able to do another one of these videos where I have it more together. But this one is completely not put together, like, at all. Unorganized. Um, and my thoughts, my brain, just, no. Mm -mm. See, I'm sorry about this video, you guys. It's very, just, not well done. But it's real, it's raw, and minus me not crying on camera, this is what I go through. Um, normally I would have a breakdown, I would cry my eyes out for like hours and hours and hours, and then eat some ice cream, and then um, read a book, and then come back to it. But it's been a month that I've known about this service. It's been a month that, uh, about three weeks that I've known about the topic, and I've come up with notes, come up with scriptures, I just, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So, I'm just not going to record anything Friday. So, after this, you'll see something on Saturday. And that'll be, what, the sixth day? That'll be the last day of this vlog. And then, I guess we'll see how it comes together on Sunday. So, that is it for this video. At least for this part of the clip. So, I'll see you guys Saturday. Morning, guys. Um, it is Saturday. 11.39 right now. And, um, I got up early, but I stayed in bed and relaxed, but I'm getting ready to finally, finally, thank the Lord, write my sermon. Um, after I did the little freak out that y'all saw on camera, y'all saw it twice, but, um, I took some time and just, I had to just woo because I was putting too much pressure on myself. Um, again, this is my first out of ministry speaking engagement i have not even fully actually spoken spoken i have not fully actually done a sermon at my church i did a platform kind of service thing where i spoke for 10 minutes but i didn't do like a full sermon of like 45 minutes to an hour so this sunday will be the first and it's nerve-wracking however um before we left okay so yesterday my church revival started um it's called recover all which was by the way bomb oh my god the revival was so so good and um i'm probably gonna do a separate video on what the re revival was about because yesterday's message phew, my god um it, it was amazing i'm gonna do a whole different video because i have so many notes to share with you guys but um yeah right before we left um i was i just kept my mind open and um i had written four points that i knew that God was telling me to speak on concerning Hannah, um, and I guess I was trying to formulate the points in a way that wasn't the way he wanted me to do it, so yesterday he finally solidified that the points that I basically have are the points that I am supposed to, supposed to speak on, so I had my four points yesterday, um, so today I'm basically just reading through what I did write and um, allowing the Holy Spirit to guide me as I type it out, um, and things like that as I edit it and just adding in my thoughts for the points now as I'm writing the points the the, the cross references are coming to my mind I don't know them like directly but I know a few of the, the words in the cross references so that I can look them up um I did go and grab my sister's bible I did a review on this bible it's the I am bible you can click the on the screen to see that um I'm personally gonna buy this for myself because it's a really good bible but I'm gonna use the back of her bible um, and this is in the King James translation, which is great, but I'm going to use that, um, as well, but I also have all my other Bibles, my new King James, um, Spirit for Life Bible, my Thompson Chain Reference, yes, and then my King James Women's Study Bible, and then the CSB Women's Study Bible, so I have my Bibles here, but, um, I feel like I can flow easily now with everything, um, so... I have my music on. I have me some tea, of course, pumpkin spice. Do I gotta even say it? Um, this is a mug that I've got I got a while ago from Marshalls, probably a year or two years ago. And I decided to pull out some old mugs because I've been using like the same mugs recently just because I've been in love with my my new mugs, but that's that and I'm just gonna put my timer on, spend an hour listening to worship music and and writing for an hour. Um, after an hour, I'm going to stop. If I'm not done, I'm going to take a break and then come back to it and spend another hour. Um, tomorrow is the day that I speak. Like, literally, it's tomorrow. Um, I do have one of my sisters from church coming to support me, which I'm so excited about. I'm not sure if anybody else is. I know that one of my aunts says she might come through as well. But I'm, I'm excited and nervous, and um, it's a big deal. 
I'm gonna try to stick to, to 45 minutes for my for my sermon. Um, 30 minutes if I can. You know, um, I have to pray in obviously over myself and the word that I'm gonna speak. Um, and then I think I have to do a benediction as well, which I'm a little nervous about. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. And um, I'm just gonna get to writing. So I'm gonna put my timer on for an hour, and literally just write for an hour. Just write for an hour. Whatever the Holy Spirit is pouring into me, I'm gonna write. Where is my note? My notebook is way over there. But I don't think I'm going to look at my notebook because I think the notes that I was writing were good notes. But I don't think it was what God wanted me to specifically say to the children because again, this is a youth service. Um, I think those notes are more so geared towards adults. This, I want to focus on the importance of prayer and um, experience and joy within prayer. Because I know for me as a youth, I didn't understand prayer for myself. I, especially when it came to hard situations. And what I got out of Hannah is that even when she was provoked, even when she felt like she was useless, even when she felt like she couldn't accomplish anything and when it looked impossible, she did the only thing she could think of, which was go to God, and she cried out to him with everything that she was, everything that she felt with her with her humiliation, with her anger. She poured out unto him. And um, I wish I would have knew that as a kid. You know, me, there's three three things you can do when you feel um, some type of way, when you're, like, in your emotions. You can allow your emotions to control you and react to people. You can shut down um, and close yourself off, which is what I would do back in the day. Or you can do like Hannah and go to the only one that can fix any problem in the world, which is God. And that's what she did. So I definitely want to focus on that within um, this and how you can really experience the joy of prayer even when you're going through something. Um, so that's what I'm going to focus on. And I'm, I'm, I'm happy that it's all pieced together. So, yeah, I'm going to go heat my, my tea up real quick because it's been sitting here for a minute. Um, I'm going to heat my tea up and then... Bring you guys along as I spend an hour writing. So yeah, let's get into it.
Hey guys, so it's 12.57 right now. Um, I spent an hour just writing. And, we're good. I still have, um... Oh, I'm actually done. Okay. Well, I have two more points to write out, and then I'm basically done. Um, which is amazing so right now my sermon is five pages long um i do print double-sided so it's about three pages double-sided right now it'll probably end up being four or five pages long um because i'm anticipating that it might be seven pages total so it'll be about four or five pages that i have with me on hand but i printed it out because i'm gonna see if my mom can just read it and give me her thoughts real quick um now Keep in mind, my sermon is really not this long. It's literally three pages. Um, but what I do is I bring the font to a 14. That's terrible. Let me just show you guys over here. So I bring the font to a 14 and then I space it by one and a half. Um, that way, as I'm reading it, I can obviously one not have my eyes get confused as I'm reading. Um, because sometimes when you're up there... In the pulpit or wherever in front of a church you um your eyes can start to mess with you so i decided to just do that so it's really not this long um but because i do that it um oh i don't want to do that go back let me save this it um makes it a lot more but it's really only three pages but on the document it's saying five because i spaced it out and then i bumped up the font sizing just to help my eyes out as i'm reading so yeah, um, I'm pretty pleased so far with what I have. I'm going to give it to my mom, let my mom check it out. And then um, it's almost 1 o'clock now, so maybe at 2 I'll come back and sit down for another hour and write some things. But I'm done right now, so I'm just going to close it out. And um, the next clip you see, we'll see, will be me ending this vlog with my completed sermon. And yeah, so this is basically my process. Um, you guys were interested and this is my process. I will probably do another video like this um, for another sermon that I write. It probably will be, will be more organized, but this one was literally just, you know, just a fly. So, um, yeah, that's it. And I'll see you in the last clip. Hey, guys. So, it's currently Sunday. Right now, 1.24 in the morning. Just got back from the revival at my church. Um, well, the revival that we had, and it was amazing. Um, I danced today with the dance ministry, so we did get a chance to dance, and um, the service was just, <sighs> these past two days have been phenomenal, but today is a day that um, I have to preach, <laughs> um, so I'm going to, it's 124, I'm going to give myself 30, 45 minutes to write, um, and I pretty much just have to do the point for faith and clean up the final point for um, remaining faithful because I pretty much have that. I just need to clean it up and then I'm going to put it out and um, I will edit it tomorrow and if I need any additional notes, I'll write it down in my notebook which I will take my sermon notebook with me um, just to have one hand in case I did, you know, the Lord drops anything else on me. But that's what I'm going to do right now. Um, so when I come back on camera, I'll have my completed sermon because um, a sermon is never complete, no matter how many times you try to complete it. But I'll have my completed sermon printed out, and then I'm going to go to sleep. And, um, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> my son is knocked out. Right, then he's asleep. Um, and everybody else in my household is asleep. I think my mom is still up getting herself together. But, um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do right now. And, um, pretty much, yeah, I'm going to change my clothes get comfortable, use the bathroom, and then put my timer on for about, I'm going to say 45 minutes, but I'm going to give myself 30 minutes. Um, so yeah, I'll catch you guys when I'm done.
Okay, guys, so, 2.07 in the morning. I'm done. Nervous, but I'm done. Um, I just printed out the letter, the invitation letter, highlighted some stuff on that, but um, I have a paper clip here. I think I got this from my Erin Condren planner, possibly. Just it's a gold paper clip, the spiral. Um, but yeah, six pages, um, three pages printed, so it's front and back. First page, second page, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Um, and basically, all of the scriptures, because I read the main scripture from my Bible, so I will be taking this. This is the Bible that I'm using for now because of the, the font. I think I'm going to look into getting a um, preacher's or minister's Bible or something like that. But I'm taking my New King James Spirit-Filled Life Bible with me. Um, and I'll read the main scripture out of my Bible. Um, when I'm writing out my sermons, I normally will insert the scripture. So here's the main scripture here, but I prefer to read it from my Bible. And then um, I also highlight and gray the scriptures. So um, as you guys can see here. So my main points, I mark it with a yellow highlighter in the Word document. Um, my scriptures, I do with gray highlight because it's the lightest one and then I will bold my um scripture references so the scripture reference is bolded in lavender and then the actual scripture is written then I have it highlighted not all of them will be written out such as um first chronicles 6 and 1 I don't have written out but I have that there and I have my bible I have um first peter five and six written down but i don't have the scripture written out which is right here um same thing with first peter five and seven so that's how that goes that way as i'm up there all i really have to do while i'm up there is like I ha okay so let me just put this in the folder I'm taking my pad um, or clip folio with me. This is the one I got from Me To We. Picked it up at Walgreens um, a couple months ago. And um, this is what I'm taking since I'm wearing pink in my clothes. Don't know. But um, so while I'm up there, I go up there with this in my Bible. Um, and then as I'm preaching, let me show you guys. Let me bring the camera down just a bit. So as I'm reading off... And speaking from my um, manuscript, in a sense, I can just keep everything like this and just flip it so that I'm still flowing. I have my scriptures already written in in the gray. I know my points are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And um, the only thing not written inside are personal testimonies that I'm going to include. And that is because a lot of the times um, when I write them in there... I end up switching what I'm going to speak on. So like for the first part, which is seek God in every circumstance, because um, we have Hannah who sought God even in her bitterness and her being provoked. So then I can talk about a time in my life when um, I had to seek God in a terrible situation, um, remaining humble before God. I probably won't give anything for that, but um, depending on God and not yourself, I definitely can talk about that because I've done that before. Um, having faith, I can talk about that, and then remaining faithful and committed. Basically, when you make a vow to God, um, staying faithful in that commitment that you made or that vow you made. So, um, pretty much I'm done for the night. Um, it's 2.11. I'm going to just clip everything together, stick it in, pack it up. And, um, yeah, I'm going to see if my sister can record tomorrow. Um, so that is the plan for that. I know my, my other sister from church, um, is going to be at the service, so she most likely will record it, but I do want to have actual footage for you ladies as well, so I'm going to see if my little sis can record while I am speaking. Um, so I'm actually going to take this footage off the camera so that it's already on my computer, that way this is a blank camera for tomorrow, but, um, yeah, guys, oh gosh, it's tomorrow, today. So I'm going to end this video here um 
thank you guys for watching um and i hope this was helpful for anybody out there who is a minister a preacher or whatever um if you minister the word of god um, i will definitely have another video like this hopefully uh, like i said again more organized because this one as you can see was definitely unorganized but um yeah i'll see you guys tomorrow bye